Well, there you are. How's it looking? <laughs> Got to give it a rub down every morning here. Yeah, I'm going to figure out a way to slide this head off and get this thing going. All right. Well, let's go on inside and see what's happening in there. It's amazing how precision this 82-year-old uh, machine is. It's uh, uh, putting out parts that are uh, around a half a tenth uh, round. And, and that's, that's really good. Uh, some of the things about this uh, wave here, um, you'll find on the Monarch 10 E. And uh, I want to do a little bit of a kind of a quick comparison on some things. Like uh, I just uh, did a, 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 a test uh, in uh, earlier videos where uh, I cut a piece of metal with a three jaw chuck that's a little bit out of balance. And then I uh, put this uh, four jaw chuck in and uh, cut the same piece of metal and, uh, you know, cut that tolerance in half. And uh, it, it's like that on the, on the little Monarch, but even more magnified because of the ball bearing spindle has uh, more deflection um, than the... Um, heavy-duty Temkin bearings in this uh, old Axelson machine. And, you know, some of the adjustments and stuff uh, on this, I'll show you. Like uh, the dial here, if you can even read it, it's real hard to read. And I, <laughs> I put a mark on it uh, on zero, see, with a felt marker. But it, it reads zero to 400. And... Uh, We'll go over and have a look at the Monarch here, how, how it reads. Okay, looking at the Monarch uh, feed dial here, um, it reads from 0 to 200. And of course, this one's got the uh, metric part back here that's got a 127 tooth gear to gear it down. Um, so this has a lot finer um, in feed, for one thing. It's uh, twice. It's twice as fine. Now, it's the same with the machine here. Let, let me put some light on the subject here. I'm going to do a tune-up on this, so we'll kick it on. Fan comes on, and the light comes on. So I got a four draw truck in here, and it's balanced like uh, like the four draw in the axle set. And if I put a truck in that's not balanced, I'll probably get twice the the problem. And usually the problem is the part ends up larger on the end, and then you can check uh, with V block or like I was. Uh, quick check in with um, a V anvil micrometer and a dial snap gauge, you can uh, check the uh, roundness of the part. Now, the advantage of this Monarch 10 E is you can like cut um, harder materials like uh, pre-hard 4140s and stuff like that and get to an, uh, an Bearing accuracy where you don't need to do, <clears throat> excuse me, there's uh, fires going on, um, where you don't need to do second operations. See, I can do really highly accurate work on the axles, and I can actually get, you know, bearing accuracy roundness, but I it's hard to hit target diameters with a with a crude machine like that. So, like on the axle center, it'd be better to hit a little bit over than work the part down by lapping or external honing or 
grinding. It's a second operation. But on this machine here, with uh, um, the accuracy and uh, that has gone on into making this machine, you can uh, often uh, hold super accuracy without resorting to grinding, saving time and saving money. And plus, this, <laughs> this particular machine has the uh, inch metric and uh, that is really a time-saving thing too. Okay, I'll be back in a minute. Now another problem holding tolerance on an old machine like this Axelson is it doesn't run smooth enough in all its gears. And uh, I was getting uh, another 50 millionths out of roundness running it at um, its highest speed which is 1127. Uh, which is okay for some things, you know, but uh, not for the highest accuracy. I found backing it down one gear, the machine ran smoother. Now, one of the ways you can test how uh, smooth the machine runs is uh, take a bar. Oh, where was that one? Right here. This one will work here. Take a smooth ground bar. And you can put it in the spindle and run the machine in all the gears. And you can just put your hand on the bar and let it slide in your hand. And you can feel which gear is going to be best to get the best accuracy. Because the more vibration, the larger the part's going to be on the end and more likely that accuracy of rotation is going to um, increase too. So none of that really matters a lot um, unless you're trying to uh, hit exactly a bearing tolerance by single point cutting. <laughs> which uh, is a lot easier on the Monarch 10WE because it's uh, actually made for that, you know. Uh, this is made for that too, but uh, not exactly um, to, to the degree. But no matter what machine you're trying to do stuff on, you have to make it happen. You have to pay attention to details if you want to get to the accuracy to mount bearings, you know, and, and uh, have them uh, not fail. Okay, I'll get back over to that other machine. Yeah, this is one of the later uh, model tube drive machines. And um, the tube drive... Uh, uh, despite rumors and nonsense on the internet, it's really quite a reliable drive if you use the machine right. Now, this machine here has uh, five horsepower. Got a five horsepower direct current drive, infinitely variable speeds with this knob right here. It's got two speed ranges. It's got a, I believe it's five to one uh, gearbox on the end of the motor. We'll have a look at that because we're going <clears> to <throat> clean everything out on this thing. And uh, uh, it requires quite a bit of care <laughs> if you want it to be in top condition. It's like a performance automobile, you know. That old Axelson over there is almost kind of like a big old truck, you know, with all those gears and everything. This, this thing here is just a little bit different, <laughs> different that way. Okay, so this has five horsepower, and uh, way over here, this Axelson has a five horsepower motor too. But uh, these machines use that horsepower in different ways. It's like, um, if you look at this machine, it's got a, <laughs> it's got a, a Morse taper too. And this is actually quite a heavy tailstock, but it's not, let's go look at that. It's not that tailstock. 
that's a tailstock. No, this is a pretty good tailstock. But uh, in one of my videos, I leaned on the tailstock. I was doing a length cut, okay? And, and uh, checking it with the uh, dial snap gauges. And it was out of half thousands. And I leaned on this tailstock like that with one hand or my shoulder, I can't remember, while I walked it. And that was enough to uh, correct a half thousandth error in a length that I was cutting. So it's a little bit uh, uh, sensitive. And uh, one guy I know pointed out that it's like, you know, chasing a tenth on a Monarch 10 double is like chasing a thousandth on an Atlas bench lathe. It is kind of it's kind of funny, but maybe it's funny because it's true. Um, the Atlas bench lathe, you have to do a lot of little things to uh, get a thousandth accuracy out of those things consistently. I had one for quite a while. I actually liked the machine. Okay, so this machine here uses the horsepower. It has five horsepower to maintain speed when you're making precision cuts. So there's no drop. And I'll show you, that's a circuit I need to adjust. There's a circuit that maintains the RPM under cutting load. And that's, that's really remarkable. And that's what sets the Monarch 10 w apart from all the others. Okay, I'll be back. Now, you got to use your horsepower wisely. Now, this little Monarch here does have quite a bit of power, but uh, I'll show you a part I made on a Monarch 10 w uh, before I had this one. And that's my um, um, adjustable four run out 5C collet chuck that is modeled after a CNC chuck. And I made it in December of 1999. So I've had this for a while. Now, the nose here is a hardened CNC 5C collet holder. And I simply pressed it into the body. Okay, so this is a hardened part I bought, but I shaped and ground it, okay? And I think you can see the back of it down in there, see? You can see the edge of it. There's the set screw for the slot in the collet. I had to make an access hole. I made this back plate and the pins on a Monarch 10 E. So, doing this accurate work, um, I didn't start this from uh, the piece of steel, four inch piece of chrome steel, um, on this machine. I started it on a on a geared head machine. I had a lodge in Shipley. So I removed the bulk of the material on a heavy duty lathe instead of stressing this machine or the machine I was using at the time. And uh, that's a good way to really uh, think about uh, these machines. They're not, in my opinion, they're not very good for roughing material out, you know, like sticking a, uh, a huge piece uh, for this size. Look at the size of the machine. It's better to rough stuff out. And I generally rough stuff out within a sixteenth or a thirty-second of an inch on a heavy-duty machine, you know. Give it woodworking tolerances, oversized, undersized on the on the bore, and when you when you get it over here, then you don't have so much to remove, right? 
and and you're not running the carriage back and forth and and all that kind of stuff you know and uh, reduce the use <laughs> If you want to reduce the abuse, reduce the use. <laughs> it's really true. You want to preserve this machine. Um, the first place I was exposed to these machines, love to talk about that, it was uh, a, a big uh, economic uh, catastrophe called the Whoops uh, 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 nuclear plants that were never built, a giant waste of money. But that's why I first got exposed to these back, back in the 70s. But this place uh, I, I snagged a job for because I could cut threads on an antique uh, Shopland lathe they had. I could cut metric threads. That's why I got the job there. Motorcycle stuff, you know, metric things. Well, anyway, <laughs> they had three of these things. And they had a new one that they kept a tarp on, like I do here. Then they had uh, one that was pretty darn good. Then they had one that was getting a little iffy. And that was the one that got the most use. And they let me use that a couple of times because I could use the, uh, the old uh, vintage Shoblin to cut metric threads on. And uh, then later on, they got a, a, a metric uh, 10EE like this. So. You uh, are better off uh, not having this as your only machine. You really need something. If you want to make parts and stuff like this and rough them out of material, you really need a machine to do the rough stuff. Okay. Okay, this Monarch 10 double E inch metric tool maker slave with the uh, original variable speed drive, original paint, is now 33,000, including a dynamically balanced four-jaw chuck, a tool holder, and I'll include a brand new razor sharp micro 100 tool bit so you can do the highest precision right off okay